Okay, in this tutorial movie, what I'm going to do here is load in a set of Gerber files. Uh, go ahead and assign the layer types, the stack up, and then perform some basic editing such as modifying the trace sizes, uh, adding teardrops. Okay, so the first thing you'd like to do is let's go ahead and use the auto load feature. What's nice about the auto load feature is you just simply select a particular folder, and whatever folder you select, the FAT3000 will look in there and see if it can find. Uh, all the Gerber files and everything else of that nature. If you happen to have a folder that's, uh, for instance, on an, on the network or somewhere else, just simply click this button. It's our advanced folder finder, and then that way you're able to select the uh, uh, wherever your your particular folder may be. All right. And so what I'll do here is I'll click next. And what next is at this is our main matrix of the the layers that's set up. So what you do here is you'll notice that some layers have been detected, some layers have not. What FAT3000 does is it uses the Gerber layer, the Gerber name, so the name of the Gerber file itself to detect what the layer type is. And in general, about 80 to 90 percent of all Gerber files, you can pretty much tell what type what they are just by the name itself. Uh, so say for instance here, one comp and two solder did not show up. So what I can do is go to detect layer types. And you'll see in here, all these are all the text variables that are used to search. Uh, so, for instance, if a layer has a name Art01 somewhere in the string, FAT3000 will go ahead and assign that top layer, provided that some other layer is not, provided the top layer is not already been defined. So, uh, what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and add, uh, just and everything here is comma separated, so I'll add CMP. And also for the bottom layer right here, I'll add a comma SLD. So now I know that FAT3000 is going to detect these two layer types. So let me go ahead and press OK. And then now you'll see that this is set up. And the good thing is that now you're set up too for, for good. Because once you put those settings inside there, you're pretty much you're set. And so you don't have to worry about entering this in again. And from now on, every time you import any type of Gerber files with this particular naming, FAT3000 automatically detects it. All right, and uh, one thing just to go back, once you're familiar with the software and you're quite confident about it detecting layer names and types and things, you can just press the finish button and that will actually bypass this screen and take you right to what you see here, which is the, the Gerber files being loaded in. All right, so at this particular location, what I'd like to do first before we do any editing is just uh, perform the stack up. Uh, stack up is just important because that means Finish verifying any layer names, layer types, part of me that haven't been defined, and then lastly, just performing the order. So that way, when you want to run DRC or DFM checks or anything more advanced, uh, you're good to go and uh, you're in great shape. All right. So what you'll notice first is that for each particular layer type, what FAT3000 does is it colors it in. So if it's a metal layer, you're going to have a golden color. Drill has a gray. Silk screen has white. Mask is green, and so on and so forth. First thing is I noticed that FAT3000 did not detect these two layer types. Let me see what they are. And just by double clicking on it, you'll see that it displays it. Uh, these, in my opinion, since we already have a top and a bottom, these would be the internal um, uh, plane layers, and this would be a positive plane. And the way I can tell that is negative planes have uh, thermals and obviously just have the pads only. And what they're expecting you to do is reverse the, the polarity or the field uh, during, on the film or you know during manufacturing so what I can do is right click for the type go ahead and select where are we at positive plane there we go and do the same let me see yeah and do the same thing here positive plane now these particular layers I'm not too familiar with the STF so at this point uh, there may be some type of adhesive or some other type of layer, but I'm just going to go ahead and just right click and select uh, graphic, which is at the very bottom. And the reason being is, or you can select temporary or just anything. You just want to be able to, to tell FAT3000 during checks to just ignore this layer at this moment because I myself am not too sure exactly what these specific ones are for. Um, so I've selected graphic for everything. That's actually the border layer, so we're fine there. All right, great. Now what I want to do is just set up the stack up. So first thing you always want to set up is the metal layers. So I'll go ahead and obviously that's your top layer. Your bottom layer would be right here. Here are your plain layers. I'm going to assume that this is the second layer because it's uh, 
can basically get out the C on there for a component. And then so this looks like a four layer board. So you have your four metal layers there, the legend. Let's put that up on the top. Let's also move the mask up for a top mask. And then here for your legend, move that up one. For your mask, move this up one. And then last is the paste. So we'll put the paste on top of the legend and the paste right up here. All right, great. So now if you look right here, we've pretty much got it set up. Got my paste, silk, mask, layer one, layer two, layer three, bottom layer, mask, and then your, um, probably, probably should take that down one more because it just threw me off. Bottom silk screen, and then your bottom uh, paste layer and drill. Great. So just turn all layers on. So now you're set. And also the software will draw in this particular sequence, and you can also modify it by going to the layer table uh, to affect the, the drawing. So what I'm going to do here is let's go ahead and modify and do our basic editing now on the top layer. Uh, and what I like to do is just double click again any particular layer and then that way what it does is it turns off every other layer except for the one you click. So it's a nice way to quickly navigate and kind of go through the layers. And what I'll do here is let's say for instance what I like to do is to modify these traces. Let's say for instance uh, they're causing DRC, DFM errors here or DRC errors and so I want to just decrease the trace because the manufacturer said it's fine to decrease by one mil per side. Uh, so what I can do here is, first thing you'll notice is whenever you drag the mouse over any of the objects here, uh, they highlight and the description of what's in them is, appears in the bottom left corner on the, in these um, status bar. So if I select it, now it stays permanent so I can drag my mouse cursor down here and you'll see that it's a, uh, basically decode 36 and there's a six and a half mil uh, trace that's associated with that. So the way the Gerber files work is essentially the traces are just XY coordinates and then your decode is essentially the shape that goes along the trace line. So that shape happens to be six and a half mils wide. So that's what why that trace is six and a half mils. And it's using decode 36. That's an important clue there. So now that I know it's decode 36, what I can do is first let me say, hmm, before I modify and change the sizes, I could just uh, change this decode 36 in the aperture table, make that smaller and then it will affect everything. But before I do that, let me see any other places that are using that de particular decode 36. So you use the highlight active decode. And what that does is it's in shadow mode here. So that means that it stays the same, but everything that's not decode 36, and you'll see here, is drawn as a shadow. So it makes it really easy to, in, for you to visibly uh, recognize and see what is associated with the decode 36 and I see this being used uh, for creating a lot of the teardrops and other things of that nature so we're probably not going to want to mess with this also with decode 36 may be used in other layers uh, so we're going to leave that one alone what we're going to do though is modify every decode 36 on this layer by using the selection filter and uh, so what what I'll do here to turn off the shadow mode you can just right click or you can press escape key anytime to get out of whatever you're in uh, so let's go ahead and decrease decode 36 for all these traces by one mil per side. So what I'll do is I'll go to the selection filter. For decodes here, I'll just enter 36. So this means anything with decode 36 is going to be selected. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. Now I'll press all. And what all does is anything that's visible runs through the selection filter. So if I have three different layers on, if decode 36 is on those other layers, they'd be highlighted. But in this case, I only got one layer on. So it's only just checking through one layer. All right, so I see right here that that's been highlighted. So what I'll do here is I'll go to the Tools menu, Fabrication, Grow Shrink. And I'll, as you see right here, I have already have it defined, but it goes size per side. So if I choose a positive number, that means whatever I select, whether it's traces, pads, polygons, you name it, it's going to increase by that amount per side. And if I have a negative number, it's going to do the opposite and decrease. So I'll leave it here at negative one, but again, you can change to whatever value you see fit. Press OK. And then that, now what that's done is you'll see the traces already do appear a little thinner. When I drag the mouse over now, if I click, you'll see that now it's using decode 156. And now that's four and a half mils. So I've already decreased by one mil per side uh, for that. And you'll see there's a lot bigger gap in here. So most likely now this is going to pass DRC, uh, provided that again, everything is correct. And again, this is just a demo just showing the, the features that you can do for editing. 
All right, so the next thing I like to do is show some basic traits and editing and modifications for vertices if you want to move things around, and then also adding teardrops. So what I'll do here is I'll move in here now again. The teardrops, I do see already a part of this Gerber file, but let's just assume that these teardrops are not stable enough or you need bigger, stronger uh, teardrops there to, to hold everything. So what we're going to do is delete these old teardrops and replace them with new teardrops. And we're also going to modify the vertices locations. So in this case, what I like to do whenever I'm editing and there's a lot of stuff going on, I like to turn the fill off, put it in outline mode so I can kind of see. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of data went into just creating these teardrops. Uh, so what I can do is I can select. And when you select in this direction, it creates a selection window, which means that whatever fits totally inside that window gets selected. Uh, and, and you'll see that round pad, that little piece is still sticking out, so it won't get selected. And if you go the opposite direction, it creates a green window. It's real tiny here, but that creates a crossing, which means anything that's inside the window or even touches it will get selected. So I'll do this here, and you'll see that it's just selected basically the outside elements. Uh, right click and select delete. I personally like to just press the delete key, but for the tutorial here, I'll do that. And I'll turn fill back on just for the heck of it now. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll select using the window. It picks everything in there, and I'm just going to press the delete key. All right, great. So now I have these two pads set up. And again, you can do this on large scale, but this is just to show how this works. Now, what's nice about FAT3000 is it does work just like a PCB layout tool. So what I can do is basically click the trace, and what happens is you get grips that appear. And what's nice about the grips is that I can just click down on them and move them around. And lo and behold, it connects. It keeps the connection between the traces and the pads. So it's a very nice tool for making modifications. Um, I happen to be on grid, but if you don't want to be on grid, you can. This is the object snap button down here at the bottom, or pardon me, combo. And you can select from a whole bunch of different types of snaps. Uh, and also, if you want to modify your grid sizes or anything else of that nature, or grid appearance, you press the grid button. And I have it set up on quad, but if I like the old-fashioned points, let's say for instance. I can do that, press OK, and then when I zoom in, there's your, your little grid points right there. All right, so what, let's go ahead and move this down here. We'll just put it about there. All right, and uh, let's assume that we're fine here. Now let's go ahead and say, well, let's go rebuild. Now that we've moved the traces around, and again, there's a lot of other editing and modification things you can do here, but let's just say now I want to go ahead and re-put stronger uh, teardrops in these areas. What I can do is use the teardrop feature. So what FAT3000 does is you just select an area, and it will ignore any traces or anything else, and just concentrate on the pads uh, for generating teardrops. However, if you know I just don't want to even bother with that, I want to just select the pads only. You can you always use the filter here, and basically unselect everything except for flashes. Flashes in Gerber are exactly the same as pads. So you can get used to either calling it a flash or a pad. It really doesn't matter. It's referencing the same thing. I press OK. And now when I select the window, you see that only the two flashes are selected. The trace itself has been left alone. So I go to the Tools menu, and I go to Fabrication, and I'll select Teardrop Creation. And what you can do here is with Teardrop, there's two types. There's a standard teardrop, and there's what we call a snowman. Snowman is where a smaller little flash is placed uh, to create a stronger junction between the trace and the pad itself. Uh, however, the nice thing about it is it definitely uh, reduces data size because you just have one flash that's involved. But um, in general, users will always use these standard teardrops. And the only thing with teardrops is this, what's called a teardrop offset multiple. What that basically means is how long is your teardrop going to be? And uh, let's say, for instance, if you use a multiple of one, it's going to be a very short teardrop. And if you use a multiple of like four, or five, or six, it's going to be a long, uh, thick teardrop. So we're going to use four just to kind of dramatically make a statement here. So I press OK. And then now you'll see that the teardrops have been added. Two have been added to this because there's this one pad has two traces going into it. And then this one has just one trace. And uh, so you see that's how you're able to add the teardrops in there and make any of those additional changes. Uh, so in this tutorial, we covered the importing of the data, assigning layer types, uh, also doing the stack up, and uh, doing trace modifications as far as enlarging and reducing, uh, deleting and some basic edits, and then adding teardrops. Thank you very much.